Here I list the three energy contributions for an ideal solution. So this is the delta G standard for a molecule, in this case this uh, pink molecule here, that's dissolved in a, a collection of other identical molecules which is the solvent. So for example this could be water molecules and this could be a molecule dissolved in water. And this is the standard free energy change associated with this, with this molecule. Uh, it's for an ideal solution, meaning that there are no interactions between solute molecules. So in an ideal gas, there's no interactions between any molecules. In an ideal solution, there's no interaction between this molecule and a similar pink molecule somewhere else. But there is interactions with the solvent. You have a, a total of five contributions. The first four are similar to the free energy contributions for an ideal gas. So you have a term associated with the molecule, so that has to do with the enthalpy of the, the molecular enthalpy and the conformational entropy, translations, rotations, and vibrations. So all of this solute molecule in the presence of the solvent. And then you have the solvation free energy, which is the interaction between uh, the solute and the solvent molecules here. We'll talk uh, more about this in later videos. Uh, in this video I want to talk more about the differences uh, in these terms, specifically this term. Uh, so these three terms, so the molecule conformation, rotation, and vibration, uh, the equations for this are basically identical to the gas phase equations. Uh, for translation, the standard translational uh, free energy, things are a little bit different. So for the, ent for the enthalpy part, um, the standard enthalpy change is given by uh, the usual equation, uh, but we can only here use the ideal gas equation for any gas molecules uh, that are produced or absorbed as part of the reaction. So the only time the volume really changes is when you produce or absorb gas molecules. So this is the number of moles of gas molecules and this is the change in the number of moles of gas molecules. So if you have uh, a reaction solution where you don't, uh, where none of the products or reactants are gases, then the translational enthalpy is this. So 3 halves NRT instead of 5 halves NRT. Also for the entropy part, the standard state is no longer a pressure of 1 bar, but it's 1 mole per liter. So you have a concentration here, uh, a standard concentration, and that standard con concentration is 1 mole per liter. Uh, you can rewrite this equation like this, where you collect all the constants uh, in B, and then you just have the mass of the molecules in grams per mole and the temperature in Kelvin. So the fact that you uh, that the translational enthalpy and entropy are different in the gas phase and in solution means that there is um, a difference or a correction uh, if you go from gas phase to solution in, these, uh, in this term. So uh, all the numbers I give you here are at, at 25 degrees. So for example, the gas phase translational enthalpy is 5 halves RT. In solution is 3 halves RT. So the difference here is, is RT, and that's 2.5 kilojoules per mole Kelvin at 25 degrees Celsius. And similarly, uh, the entropy in the gas phase will be slightly larger than the entropy in solution because uh, you're dealing with a different volume. The volume is larger in the gas phase. It's uh, at 25 degrees, it's about uh, 24 liters per one mole, and in solution it's one liter per one mole. So the entropy is smaller in solution, as you can see here. Uh, and so this means that um, the the standard energy is slightly different.
at 25 degrees Celsius, it corresponds to about five and a half kilojoules per mole. So that's a reasonably large uh, difference between solution and gas phase. And so that means that if you calculate delta G standard, this part here, uh, so the part that has to do with the molecule itself, uh, that delta G standard will be different. So how different it'll be or what the sign uh, of that difference is will depend on whether you uh, have more molecules in the product state compared to the reactants. So if you have two molecules here where you make the correction and only one big molecule here where you make the correction, that means that delta G standard is larger in solution compared to the gas phase. Uh, alternatively, if you have more molecules in the reactant state compared to the product state, then the delta G standard is in solution is smaller than in the gas phase. And if you have an equal number of reactant uh, molecules and product molecules, then this correction cancels out. Now I have a question for you. So here we have the standard enthalpy change in solution, which has the same contributions uh, as the free energy. So you have the first four terms, which have equivalents uh, in the gas phase, and then the enthalpy of solvation. So since this term is different in the gas phase and in solution, there will be a correction here. And the question is, what is this correction at 50 degrees Celsius for this reaction right here? So press the pause button, think about it, and when you're ready to answer, press play. Ready? So the answer is 2.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and so here is the answer. The, the correction here, which we want, is the difference between the solution translational standard enthalpy change and the one in the gas phase. So in solution, we know that the standard enthalpy change is 3 halves RT. All right, so you have 3 halves RT for the product minus 2 times 3 halves RT for the reactants. Okay, and the same for the gas phase. Instead of 3 halves RT, you now have 5 halves RT. Okay, so you're, since you're subtracting twice the amount here, you get negative 3 halves RT for the translational uh, standard enthalpy and solution, and 5 half plus 5 halves RT, so minus a minus, uh, for the gas phase. And so the end result is RT. And if you plug in the values here, you'll find that this is 2.7. So there's two things to notice. One is this has the opposite uh, sign compared to the standard free energy change. And also at 25 degrees, this is uh, 2.5 kilojoules per mole. So the fact that you go to 50 degrees really doesn't change the magnitude of this very much.